doesn't sound like it. Okay, so we've got still a few minutes left. And um, I usually, when we've got our in-person conference, provide a quick update about what's going on um, in the world, how is the situation with the uh, global IPv6 deployment, because not everyone is familiar with all the statistics and information that you can get. And often uh, people need this information in order to prepare their own business case in case you have not started working on IPv6 and you still need to persuade your colleagues, your management, that this is uh, something that is worth looking at and uh, it just better prepares you for the future if what's really unavoid um, you know, unavoidable. So a quick update. I think I shared uh, share this also last year and it's still true this year, where basically this year 2020 is not a good for I, uh, not good year uh, for IPv4. Uh, doesn't matter the, the, the pandemic situation in general, that's what we saw coming already um, a year ago, where basically two larger RIRs have completely run out of IPv4, RN that's few years ago, and Tribe the complete run out was in November 2019. And uh, the remaining uh, RIRs, they were due to run out this year. And I admit that I have not really checked completely all the numbers, but uh, we are in pretty dire situation. So the only way you can really go about getting any public IPv4 uh, prefixes is to go on a market uh, through a market broker and um, get uh, some public IPv4 addresses transferred for quite a hefty price. This is also if people were at our meeting a year ago or you checked our slides from the previous event. Uh, this is something that I have been watching uh, for years. So I've got actually just the history of uh, how the IPv4 prices are growing. So basically, uh, we were starting quite low at about $7 per IPv4 address. Uh, that was before Arin ran out of IPv4, uh, which was early 2015. And then uh, we could see the price just simply going up. I checked um, with IPv4 Market Group. You can see the link down at the bottom of the uh, slide. And basically, uh, the price for it, since this uh, last year, 2019 till today, that has not changed much. We know that the pandemic Im impacted lots of deployment activities. Companies have issues, you know, getting into pubs, getting into buildings, data centers, you know. So uh, everything is much more restricted. That's why um, I assume the global um, deployment levels have slowed down. But that doesn't mean that things have stopped and we have not made really any progress. So just keep that in mind because if your company needs any public IPv4 addresses, you need to usually go through a market broker just to help, to get some help with all the paperwork. They usually have contacts and know who is selling what, um, but the price is quite uh, significant. Just um, multiply $21 by the number of IPv6, uh, IPv4 addresses you need. We are not selling IPv6 yet. Um, where are we in terms of the global adoption? So uh, as you can see, this has, uh, this has gone up um, again a little bit. We are kind of on the flat, flat line. You can see also the effect of, of the pandemic whenever uh, lots of countries went into lockdown. So the, the usual weekly oscillation between weekends and the weekdays, which was about 5% pre-pandemic, uh, then went to about 2.5%. Two, two but now like everybody's kind of easing the rules. People are slowly returning to their offices, even though we know what's the situation. So again, like, uh, but you can see the oscillation is, is there. It uh, got smaller uh, at the beginning uh, of this year. Uh, right now, the top number that Google has hit is about 33.71%. Uh, it was at the beginning of November. Um, if you zoom into this um, chart, you will see that uh, last weekend, so um, 12th and 13th of uh, December, a few days ago, the maximum was 33.2. But what is interesting to see, the um, oscillation right now is about 3%. And even with the drop, that again can change, right? Uh, but currently the drop, uh, the bottom is actually still touching 30%. So uh, we have gone up. Um, I can't remember, I think the maximum last year was just like a hair under uh, 30%. And I think I said that the meeting is like somebody's really playing on our nerves because everybody wants this curve to go over 30%. So that happened this year. The growth hasn't been as significant. The line is currently quite flat, but also you need to bear in mind is Google's view of the world. Um, uh, and I'm gonna share on the next slide a couple of other statistics. Uh, for the UK from different sources so you can check things for yourself. Uh, 
one thing to note in case you don't know, Google doesn't have presence in China and China are making quite a lot of progress with IPv6 deployment. They started to roll out 5G um, you know, um, at a large scale. And we know this country with 1.3 billion people, even if they get 10, 20% on uh, IPv6, um, then basically uh, we are talking about hundreds of millions of people. Uh, so where is UK? Just to kind of like um, get to the end of this presentation. So we are up um, in, from Google's perspective, we see about almost 33 and half percent. A year ago, we were at 21, but the maximum we actually hit uh, last year, I think was higher and was sometime after summer, but unfortunately I removed that, uh, I removed that number. But you can see there is some growth and we know there are, um, BT, they are competing that uh, uh, deployment um, sky, they are over 90, oh, like 92%, so that they've been done for years now. Um, but interesting one for people who don't know, three, uh, they have actually moved migra um, migrated their whole network to a uh, data network to IPv6 only that was completed in summer. I was trying to get them to join us and present here today, but unfortunately, lots of people are already on their annual leave. Anyway, so that's Google's view. You can see that Akamai, Facebook, and APNIC, uh, the, the levels what they see is, uh, is uh, quite similar and the numbers are slightly higher, which is, uh, which is great. So just to conclude uh, this very brief section, a few things that I would like you to be aware of in case you have not uh, seen this um, on our LinkedIn group or uh, you are new to us. Uh, sources of information which are really useful and can be used also the information from there can be used for building your business case so ripe ncc they have run a really good event in june this year again there was the whole day was focused on ipv6 so you had you had their talks from people who run ipv6 only data centers are doing measurements of ipv6 in the ripe region uh, definitely worth checking out the material uh, if you are interested interested and then another thing happened um, only about a month and a half ago, or maybe just a month ago, um, US government issued an executive um, policy, uh, which basically is updating their uh, existing IPv6 policy, which is a little bit toothless. But right now what they are doing, uh, they are basically saying that they don't want the federal agencies and, and the states to do dual stack because that's too complicated and, and painful. They basically want to move everything to IPv6 only. And they've got a little bit aggressive timelines. People can say, oh, this is politicians, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. But I can assure you that further down, you know, people in the hierarchy, they actually know what they are doing. And it's going to be interesting how, uh, how can this impact uh, vendors that are supplying to the US government, which can then have positive impact for us, you know, who are uh, consuming their products here. Uh, because the the products, the software applications need to be basically ready for IPv6 only. So I would recommend for you to have a quick look at it. And that's all for me. Um, thank you very much for joining this meeting. And I would love to hand over to Colin and Ian. Take us to IPv6 only. Thank you, Veronica.